is we have 25 applications to the Difference Maker Challenge, right? Let's hear it, you guys. Great job. 25 applications. We were shooting for 10. I was going to be doing cartwheels if we got 10. And um, we have 25. That's pretty incredible. It's about 50-something students that are um, I interested in this. And so we're, we're very excited. The chancellor's excited. The vice chancellors are very excited about this. Um, and now we have a whole lot of work to do, which is the, the real challenge here. It makes me a little nervous, but this is good work to do. And we have some good folks here to help with that. Um, the range of applications, and I did bring them, uh, they really cover the gamut. So sometimes we're looking at like software apps. People have different causes and fundraising activities they want to engage in to help the cause. We have new products and devices. So there's really a range. You all listened really neatly to, um, to what we've been talking about the last few weeks as we've we been pumping up this challenge. So, um, so thank you all for taking this risk with us. Because as I mentioned in the very beginning, right, this is the first time we're doing this. And not everything is entirely clear. But we know that we'll, uh, we'll get this to work. So you may be wondering now what you've actually gotten yourself into, right? I mean, we talked a little bit about it, but now there is actually some work ahead of us here. So we have about eight and a half weeks. The uh, idea challenge is on April 17th, uh, when you all have a chance to pitch your idea. And we have, I think on April 12th is the deadline for getting your, your materials all together so we have a chance to vet things. Um, you have some time. I know some of you have teams. The mechanical engineers travel in a wolf pack here. We have always, there's usually five or six of them when we see them. Uh, but, and some of you are solo and you're looking to find people to work with. So we'll help you do that. Um, we need to work on sort of defining the problems and the solutions that you'll be working on. And then what types of resources you're going to need to move forward. And then what is the deliverable? The deliverable is a three minute rocket pitch, which, um, I will probably demonstrate a rocket pitch for you this evening in case you're wondering what a rocket pit act pitch actually is. A, a executive summary, just sort of summarizing what your project is, and then a poster, because we'll, I think at the event what we're planning to do is you'll have a chance to pitch your idea, but we'll probably set you up with a poster in front of it so that the judges and the uh, audience members will have a chance to come up and talk to you one-on-one -on -one about your ideas. And, uh, and as I think I've, I've mentioned in some of the previous, I anticipate probably 150 or so people will attend this event. Uh, so it'll be pretty well attended. Uh, the alumni Development Office is working with me to recruit alumni to attend this. Uh, and then you just have to impress the judges. And depending on how well you do there, you'll end up uh, hopefully with some funds to actually implement your idea over the next year. So. Um, this is, the, this is a perfect size group, so clearly not everyone is here, um, which is okay. We have enough folks here where I think we can take like a minute, and maybe you can introduce your team, introduce yourself. I'd ask, we have some great mentors and faculty fellows that are here tonight, and we have some folks that haven't joined teams yet. So um, I would just like to, everyone to uh, maybe take a minute to introduce themselves. Um, and I'll introduce my, my friend uh, Katsumi Watanabe, who is not in the Difference Maker program. He's actually a student. We have a program where we teach online courses, and it's an online program to Japan. And so there's 19 Japanese students that are taking my Graduate Innovation and Emerging Technology course, and Katsumi is visiting Lowell. So I said, well, why don't you come on down and have some pizza, and you can learn a little bit about our Difference Maker program. Um, so why don't we just start? We'll let you start. Maybe if you can do this in a, in a short time, just start. Um, and the reason I want you to mention your idea and introduce your team members is in case you're still looking for team members, there are some folks here that are looking to join teams. So this is one way that we're going to help facilitate some interaction engagement. Any particular area that you're interested in or any particular problems? Uh, I haven't looked at the projects that much okay. yet, but it um, doesn't matter. Okay, yeah. great. Right. So he's looking for a team. Hi everyone, I'm Anthony, a graduate electrical engineering student. Uh, my project is assistive tricycles for children with handicaps. It's my team. I'm Derek, um, I'm also a graduate electrical engineer. Um, yeah. So this is the, uh, the, the power, uh, assistive yeah. power truck? Okay. Yes. Very good. I, get the, I have to see this thing. <laughs> there you are got, some videos online. There are? Yeah, oh good. And do you need help now, or where are you at? Uh, pretty good right now. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> good, okay. Hi. Hi, uh, I'm Spurti Babalala. I'm a graduate student in biomedical engineering PSM program. I'm here to uh, join a team. 
I do have ideas, but I kind of like a few ideas which are already available on the internet, so I, I would like to join in one of your teams. So our project is going to be a, a limb for developing countries. So in a lot of cases where you see people who've had a limb blown off or had to be amputated due to infection, they don't necessarily have the facilities to get the really high quality prosthetics that we can get here. So what we want to do is we want to blow mold or roto mold a new heavily customizable but really cheap to make prosthetic that they can use in place of what they're using right now, which is mostly non-medical grade equipment that they find lying around. It's actually, there's some really cool people who've gotten together and they've designed prosthetics out of just stuff that you can find lying around and it's it's a really cool thing to do but we want to provide them with a better option. So yeah. So John, what's your major? I'm a mechanical engineer. Hi, I'm Seth. I graduated in December from Peace and Conflict Studies, a master's program. And the project I'm working on is called Give and Take. It's a website designed to promote generosity and giving on campus and it has three main goals. Um, one is to reduce waste. Um, college students oftentimes are moving out of a dorm room you have old appliances, furniture, you don't know what to do, you could sell it on Craigslist and have to deal with that or try to throw it out. But we're off, the website's going to give an opportunity for students to post what they have online. Other students need the same things, whether it's dorm room stuff or if it's books from a course, you could sell it back to the bookstore and get a few dollars or you could give it away. So we want to reduce waste, um, promote uh, generosity and also build a sense of community on campus. And we want to start uh, with UMass campus and then expand to other kind of closed network um, or other campuses. And we're looking for um, web developers, graphic designers, and those um, business marketing expertise. <clears throat> All right, well, I'm Yusuf Thieb. I'm a freshman here at UMass Lowell. And, uh, I came to you guys with an idea last time, but I, I kind of heard a, a different idea that I liked. It was a Vanessa Colorado's idea, and it was, uh, I think it was about Bright Horizons. It's about, like, psychological treatment for those kids in Rwanda. Right. Yeah. Right. And, so are you um, on her team now? Yeah. I'm actually helping her out with fundraising right now. Good. So you're representing that group tonight? I guess so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
um, probably be of assistance to help you sort of navigate that terrain and think about uh, what that might mean for you and your project. Uh, I also teach documentary filmmaking. I'm actually working a little bit with the, this project to, to, to assist with that. And um, if you want to integrate digital media um, in any way into your project, um, in addition to the, all the technology support that you can get from the other faculty fellows and Steve, um, I, can, I can do that too. Just pass these down. You just take one and pass them around to make sure the folks on the wall get one. Um, so we have this model that we're using to help you. And this our workshops are structured around this model. And the idea is to start with the problem, help you to clearly state what the problem is you're addressing. And, we, and then we're actually going to ask you to do a little research on that problem. And we th the reason we want you to do this is because the more you know about the problem you're solving, then the better you can present and sell that idea. If you think about this, whether you're talking about launching a business based on some sort of educational technology or creating an annual fundraising event that will support a foundation, you need to sell your idea to people, right? You need to excite people about your idea. Um, you need to invest them in your idea. And that all takes time. And one way that you can do this is by knowing a lot about the problem and then the people who are affected by the problem and then the solution. So tonight we'll spend some time talking about where do you find this kind of information. Uh, we may also touch on the um, opportunity associated with it. So part of this is talking about a problem, right? But you also have to be able to paint a picture for, fo for folks what the opportunity is associated with solving this problem. So who, who are the people that are affected by the problem? How many people are there? They're different types of people, right? If you think about something like the cell phone, you have different groups of people that use the cell phone. You've got my 75-year-old parents. They need a different cell phone than I need and that my 16-year-old daughter needs, right? I mean, for years I didn't text, right? So I didn't need a phone that needed texting. My parents need a phone with big numbers that flips open, right? That looks a lot like the phone they have. And then my daughter needs this silly thing that goes and twists that way with a keyboard and talks to her and everything. Um, those are different groups of people, right? So the solution that you develop, if you're developing a cell phone, or you're developing a crutch, or you're developing a fundraiser, different groups of people are affected different ways by the solution that you develop. So we want to spend some time helping you to think through who are the people that will be affected and help, help that will be affected by your solution, but will help you get to there. And that's going to overlap. We'll talk about that a little tonight. And then on March 1st, Professor uh, Koyevsky from the Business School is actually going to spend some more time helping you think through how your solution provides value to those people. Um, oh, I jumped ahead of myself. Uh, so on March 1st, we'll talk more about the solution, help you think through developing the solution that best serves the needs of those people. Um, how, who, who do you need on that solution? What types of knowledge and resources will you need to find that solution? And what are some of the costs and benefits associated with that? And then finally, on March 20th, uh, we'll do the workshop about identifying resources. Uh, and if this were a business, just a business plan competition, this would be sort of developing your budget, right? But this is more than that, right? This is problem solving, uh, tackling big problems, uh, different types of problems. And so what we'll do is we'll kind of help you think through the different types of resources and where you can get them. We're also going to help you to not be shy about asking for those resources. Um, and we'll talk to you a bit about how do you present a request for resources. So whether you're asking someone for a half million dollars, or you're asking them to spend some time reviewing your proposal, um, or you're asking uh, somebody with um, uh, physical disabilities to use your crutches, right? There's a way that you can do it that'll engage them in that conversation with you. And so we'll help prepare you for that. So tonight we'll start by talking about the problem. Now, I thought it would be helpful to let you know what we're planning to do with a rocket pitch, right? Because ultimately you're going to do a bunch of research over the next few weeks about your problem. You're going to do some brainstorming. You're going to put together this rocket pitch. And how many of you have done a rocket pitch before? OK. So that's why I thought it would be helpful to do one. Now, I'm going to put myself on the line tonight, right? And so this particular rocket pit is actually one that I developed uh, when I was at Babson College. So one summer I spent some time at Babson, uh, which is the uh, premier entrepreneurship uh, university in, in, uh, in the world. Um, and before we started our own entrepreneurship program, we went down there to learn a little bit about how they do it. And so as part of that activity, 
they had us do some problem solving. They said, okay, pick a problem that you want to work on and put together a rocket pitch for an interdisciplinary team. So I actually worked with a team of people uh, with di different backgrounds, some engineers, some business people, some anthropologists, uh, and we picked a problem. And so what I'll do is give you my three-minute rocket pitch. And uh, where's Delina? I saw her sneak in. Do you have a, a stopwatch or something you can time me? Okay. All right, I gotta loosen up my call here. This is tough work. I can appreciate the challenge in doing a rocket pitch, so. You, you ready? You haven't seen it, have you? Ah, oh, okay. Okay, I think, is it gonna happen as soon as it? Oh. Oh, geez, I got myself nervous for nothing. I have another slide in here. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do it first, then we'll come back and we'll talk about it, because now I'm ready to go. All right. Let's see. All right, so here you are, right? You're up on the stage. There's 100 people out in the audience. I'm going to ask them for, I don't know, $250,000 to kick my business off the ground here. So, business air travel. How many of you have flown in a plane? How many of you enjoy the act of walking through security and having your bag checked and having your personal belongings spread out on the counter? We all know that challenge and the delays associated with passing through airport security. We know the challenge with missing luggage, with losing things, forgetting your watch or your cell phone at that entry gate. So it's really an issue that affects many of us who travel. There's long security lines. And if you look at some of the uh, research on this, over 200 million uh, business flights per year. Sometimes we face waits of 30 minutes. I was in line at Logan for a JetBlue flight a couple of weeks ago. I waited over an hour just to get to the security. I thought he had plenty of time to get there. I waited an hour. If you end up missing your flight, you might not get on a flight soon. You could miss an appoint, appointment, important um, appointment. You might delay your vacation. It's just not fun. This whole issue around airport security and passing through has really made it much more difficult for us and raised our anxiety level. So what we would like to propose is the development of a new product called Securities. Securities is a device that's meant to provide some relief when you're traveling through airport security. What we propose is the development of a special briefcase, right? Where on one side you'd have your documents, maybe have your suit and tie for that person who just travels with carry-on. On the other side will be your laptop with a nice uh, invisible seal over it. So that when you pass through airport security, you just open up your bag, you put it on the conveyor, and the whole thing goes through. No need to pull your laptop out, no need to pull your cell phone out, everything in a nice self-contained um, container. But it's not just the bag that adds value for the frequent flyer here. With securities, we're also talking about creating a special security line. So we're not just selling you a briefcase, we're selling you convenience, we're going to help you get through that security line more quickly. Um, securities will have an FRID tag embedded on it to assist with tracking the baggage as we move through in case you happen to lose your bag. We'll enroll folks into a preferred traveler program which will provide them access to airports across the country. Um, and we'll also develop an easy pass security lane in partnership with the major airports around the world. This is an incredible business opportunity. We project sales, significant sales growth uh, starting in the third year, slowly ramping up as we develop our distribution model and we de develop our product uh, development model. And we estimate with 55 million U.S. Bi business travelers an estimated sales price of $150 per unit. And if we can capture 5% of that market, we're looking at potential $412 million in gross revenues over the course of five years. So in order to move this forward, we'd ask you to consider making an investment of a half million dollars into this business, which will allow us to develop the marketing team, the branding team, and a distribution network. And with that, I would say uh, if you're looking for quicker, faster, safer, more reliable airport travel, then you'd want to invest in securities. That's my rocket pitch. How long did I go? Okay, now I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to cut you off at three minutes. So Delina was being polite. She didn't cut me off. I actually saw her starting to politely wave her hand. But um, So that's a rocket pitch. Now, honestly, that's not the best rocket pitch. I've actually seen much better. But it was a few years ago that we developed that one. So You like that one? <laughs> so do you want to invest? The idea of that rocket pitch, right, is to get people interested right, to capture their attention, 
get them interested in learning more about your um, opportunity, the solution that you're pitching to them. Now, this would be accompanied, and as yours will be accompanied, by a poster, right, and an executive summary. And in the event, the judges will have a chance to ask you a few questions. So if you can pique their interest with this, then you can get into a conversation that may help them to start thinking more about investing. And that's what they're doing, basically, right? They're going to give you some portion of this $25,000 to implement your solution. So that's the idea. Any questions about that? Yes, Seth. So I have one person on the team does the rocket pitch. Have you ever seen teams where they split it up? Yes. No? Yes. Um, in fact, at convocation, uh, the uh, all the teams split it up because there were three teams. There were two people on each team, and they split it up. Uh, and in, you know who does a great job splitting it up? Are um, uh, Adam McLaughlin and Jordan Ty, who do supporting devices, the Crutch Guys, mechanical engineers. Um, they do a really good job while one of them's talking, the other one's kind of hobbling around. And uh, The other thing that makes rocket pitches work um, are, a, are, are props, right? So if you have a prop, right? So even if it's made out of cardboard or, or paper mache or so a prop of your device is really valuable in terms of uh, helping people to connect with you. Other questions? So you all, you all can do that, right? Because you're going to be armed, right? We're going to make sure you have all the information you need. And like I say, we're going to spend some time with you, I think, in early April prepping you for this. Um, now, I did want to just go over a couple of points here. The idea, what I tried to do in that is present the problem, present uh, it quickly. And you want to present the problem in a way that people can connect and identify with it. And that's why I asked you all, how many of you have waited in airport lines and I think almost every hand in the room went up right so everybody can identify with this problem so your job is helping people to identify or think about somebody who can connect with your problem then it's, I, we sort of lay out the opportunity and honestly I think I probably could have done a little bit better job laying out the opportunity Holly what would you have graded that uh, rocket pitch at a 10 oh thank you <laughs> out of 10 thank you <laughs> um, so we lay out the opportunity, we pitch the solution, this is the solution, this is how we're going to sustain the solution, and then you ask for something, right? You want to have a call to action, you want to ask, to, or, or in the case of this, explain how you'll use the funds. And so people know, I've, been, um, I've sat through hundreds of these, and the ones that most frustrate me are the ones where they don't tell me what they want, or what they want to do with the money, and I'm sat there, thinking, why am I here? What do you need from us? I, don't, I, you sh you, you, I shouldn't have to ask that. You want to make that clear. So that's the basic idea. That's where we're, where we're all heading. How do you like that little graphic? That's pretty neat, huh? Like that? PowerPoint is an amazing thing. Uh, let's see. OK. Now, this handout that I gave you. Um, and I've been talking a lot, so I'm going to stop talking. I want you to actually do a little work. So what we're trying to, we're thinking of, as, as I've said, this is the first time we've done this whole difference maker thing. Um, and it's a little different than when we have a structured class. So what we want to do is kind of put together sort of a simple tool that would help you to answer the questions that we think are important. And so today, on the, fir on the cover, is really what, really what we're going to deal with right now is this first page, which looks at what is the problem that you're going to address. And can you s clearly state that problem? If you can't clearly state it, that's OK. But it probably means that you want to spend a little more time doing some research on it. And the thing about this problem statement is it needs to be succinct, right? So it can't go on too, too long. But it really needs to focus. So it can't be too general, right? Because if it's too general, people will wonder. Like, like, for example, if you said to me, we want to cure autism, and that's all you said to me, I would sit there thinking, well, are they scientists? Are they educational? So what are they doing? So you could refine that a bit more, perhaps, to say, well, we'd like to create a fund that's going to address this issue by providing funds that support more research. Or, so it's just sort of a way of starting to narrow and focus a bit. So you want to identify the problem that you're addressing. Um, you want to identify who's affected by the problem. And by that, 
you, again, you, you've got to do some homework on that. And Holly's going to talk a little tonight about where you can find this information. Okay, so let's talk about child abuse, right? So I know you want to do a fundraiser, uh, an annual fundraiser to raise money for child abuse. So who are the people affected by this problem? Children. Children that are abused, Children that are abused yeah. Okay. Who else? Parents who don't have custody. Parents. Parents who do and parents who don't have custody, right? So two more groups, right? Um, are there other children in school who are affected by maybe anger that gets displaced? Oh, by, by the child who's abused? Okay. Anyone else? Siblings. Who are Siblings. Who being abused but are, are witnessing it. Yeah. Now, okay, so this is why we brought poster board, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not going to pull it out right now but, uh, or the post paper. But this is where, right now you're kind of brainstorming about the different groups. And this is really important because what you're going to have to think about are, what you're going to have to think about is which group or which groups will be addressed by our solution. Because it may be difficult to address all of those groups. But you can start to f figure that out. Um, now, so that talks about the child abuse piece. But you're also talking about fundraising yeah. for child abuse. So it, who are the customers of fundraising? People with money, perhaps, yeah. How much money? That depends on what kind of fundraiser you want to do. Yeah. People. So we have people like place like... Big organizations like Gatorade and Nike that are willing to donate to things that are sports related. So now you start, so you have the children, right, and their families, and you have those groups that are directly affected by this issue, right? Then you have these other groups who are also important in your formula, right? You have the, you have the people who are going to play in the soccer tournament. You may have corporate sponsors who may put up ten dollars or $50,000. I mean, we're doing this for the medical device incubator. We've got people, companies, small law firms that are giving us $25,000 a year to sponsor what we're doing. Now, we didn't really think of them as a customer, right? We didn't think of them as someone who was affected by the, our solution, which is medical device development. We thought of the, the startup companies and the doctors, but suddenly there were this whole other group of people who were interested in what we're doing. And the reason that's important is because they will put sponsorship money and they can help sustain your organization so or, or your function or business. And so really starting with the immediate group, and, and if, we, if we use stakeholder um, uh, terminology, right, you have sort of the primary stakeholders or the immediate stakeholders, the people who are affected immediately. Then you have the secondary stakeholders, people outside that group who are also, who this is an important issue for. So you want to be thinking about that um, for whatever project you're doing. So whether it's a fundraising for child abuse or it's a uh, limbs um, in third world countries, right? So if we start to think about that, we need to be thinking about clearly the people that are affected by it. Who else? Okay. We would be focusing on children because they would be the major target here because an adult, you can get a tough letter saying to start with more money and they're not going to change shape. They're going to be able to say roughly the same height. Yeah. The kids are changing their height constantly. And so a tough letter to them is not as easy to find and to buy and knowing what part is going to be. Okay. And so our focus would probably be in that kind of area. Right? So you've got the child, you've got an, uh, sort of the target market, but then, or, or the, in your case, I guess the target patient, right? So you've got the target patient, but then there are other people that would be affected by whether or not these children have prosthetics, right? Okay. So they would be? The families of those children. The families, yeah. Obviously, it must be all of the high school kids who can't go out and play. Yep. Yeah. And their friends who want to play with them. Exactly. Right. Uh, school teachers. Exactly. The community that you're working inside of, I mean, it's heartbreaking to think that that can like move or do things that it does necessarily and so offering that society the option to do that also is, is a good thing for them. So you have this whole, whole group of sort of primary stakeholders and then you'd also, I guess you'd probably want to look at the medical establishment, right? Because there's probably doctors and nurses and other folks, therapists that might be engaged. Uh, and then clearly, again, there, there are certainly companies that would be interested in sponsoring that kind of activity. Um, so you guys kind of get where I'm going with this. We've just picked two different examples here. And suddenly, we could probably come up with 10 groups for each of these issues. And what your job will be is trying to figure out, okay, so who's going to be, we're going to solve a problem for this group or, or maybe these three groups. But then there are these other groups that it's important to them that we solve the problem. 
And by thinking about that, we can start to think about how we're going to structure, what, what type of solution we can do. Because at some level, you have to worry about money, right? I mean, you have to think about, I mean, you're directly worrying about it, but it costs money to raise money, too. And so we need to be thinking about all these different pieces. And so that's what we're, we're going to do with this first group. So what I'm going to do, there's a few other questions on here. I'm going to stop talking. And if you're in a team right now, I'd like you to work on starting to bullet in some of this first page. Um, if you're not on a team, did you see a team that you were interested in learning a little more about tonight? Or? OK. So if you want to maybe brainstorm with them now, and Darlene, if there's a group that you're interested in talking with, you can kind of peek over their shoulder. There's nothing, let me just say a word about um, IP, intellectual property and proprietary uh, things. Uh, in, and I, do, I say this to medical device inventors all the time because they worry about disclosing. I said, when, you, when we're working around brainstorming, unless you're telling me a secret formula, right, something that can be patented and protected, you, that type of information you don't need to disclose here. So right now we're sort of sh sharing ideas and brainstorming. And so feel free to share ideas with each other. And hopefully what we'll end up is with better ideas. So, so go to it. We'll take maybe uh, 10 minutes. What time is it, anyhow? It's, five, it's 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Let's take, say, five minutes or so, start brainstorming. And then I want to see what kind of roadblocks you run into and then what types of things you come up with. Yes. It's And everyone's coming to us with solutions, right? And everyone has an idea, like, I want to address child abuse, and so I want to do this fundraiser, a soccer fundraiser that'll contribute to this fund. And what we're saying is, okay, that's great, but let's kind of take a look back at the problem and figure out who's affected by it and start to fill in some of the blanks between your solution and all the people and things that are involved in that problem. Regardless, I, I'm picking on them. They won't set up at the front of the table next time, I know. <laughs> or, right? And you're pitching an idea and asking somebody for money. That person with money is going to be tough on you. Now, it's probably better for them to be tough before you're actually up in front of the crowd asking for the money. So you keep being tough. Okay. Binder, and you can start putting materials in it and collecting the materials for a couple of reasons. Um, you can't keep this all in your head. You, when you present or pitch this idea, you'll want to have some good facts that you can share with people. Uh, and you also might find some good graphics and images. You saw on our slides, we did that little animation. We had the, um, the suitcase. The, we, visually attractive, not just bullet points. Um, so you'll want a place to start storing and collecting that information as you put your idea together. So do spend some more time, I think, thinking through your problems. And the other piece, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the opportunity piece because I want to give Holly a minute. Um, actually, I'll give her a couple minutes uh, to talk a little bit about where to find information. Um, and we will spend more time talking about the opportunity. But after you go through this first page here, and you notice very neatly printed here as well, so it's legible. On the back side, we have some more questions about assessing the, pro the, uh, assessing the opportunity. Um, so how is the problem cu currently addressed? Who currently provides solutions to the problem? So you want to know about what, uh, it, before you can figure out how big an opportunity is, right, part of it is knowing about who's affected by the problem, but you also have to know who else is addressing the problem and how are they addressing the problem. So are there organizations that are providing prosthetic devices to children in less developed nations? Yes. Yes. Great. That's wonderful. See, it's great because now you can go out and you can learn more about what they do and maybe you can develop a better option than they than they are offering. Um, maybe you might find an opportunity to collaborate, right? So one way, part of it is doing it on your own. The other part is maybe collaborating with someone to maybe modify an idea to make it more effective, have broader reach. Um, looking at the different solutions that are out there, sort of bulleting them all out. I mean, this is going to be some harder work, right? You're going to have to spend some time gathering this information, organizing it. You have to put it down on paper. You can't just have it in your head, right? That's why we put this little toolkit together so that you Gather all this information so that you're able to retrieve it. As you're finding information, save these sources. 
right? So if you find an article, if you find a website, save that URL, save that address. All that needs to be saved in a document so that you can retrieve it. When someone challenges you, you want to be able to say, well, this was on the American Foundation to Prevent Child Abuse website. I looked at it on this date, or I found this research article, and they had done this study, and that's what it's based on. It builds your credibility. This is all, before someone's going to give you five or $10,000, you have to be credible. And this is all about building your, your, your knowledge and your credibility. So these are some of the questions. I would suggest working on the problems and also starting to tackle some of these opportunity questions because I guarantee you when Dr. K talks about this on March 1st, she's going to be hitting some of these points. Um, so if you, get, if you can spend a little time working on this now, it'll help prep you for that. So Holly, Um, you're going to have to research your project or idea more in depth um, in the opportunity. And so I'm just going to show you um, some UMass Lowell resources that will help you guys out um, in doing so. So the first step um, is you're going to want to find the NAICS code of um, maybe like the industry, the market industry that your project or idea is in. So and then um, over the summer, I actually worked for a medical device startup company. I had an internship there. So I'm just going to use um, my experience and examples from that. Um, so under the search um, bar, type in um, like a keyword about your project. So the medical device that I was working on had to do with um, diagnostics um, and uh, rapid testing of um, different um, fluids and things. So if I wanted to type in diagnostic, for instance, and then hit search, so different categories come up. So you can look at the title and then also look at the common keywords column, which one is closest to you. So I was doing bacterial um, detection. So therefore, my code is 621511. And go to the UMass Lowell website. And if you go under libraries on the top black bar, click that. And then on the left hand side bar, you go to databases. And this is all written on this sheet. And then go under business and management. And then the third one down is called IBIS World. And it's a US and global industry market research, economic report, and profiles. And then enter. And then it'll come up with different reports. So the first one, diagnostic and medical laboratories in the US. So if you click on that, a whole entire report will come up with a bunch of different information about um, that specific industry. So for instance, it includes industry at a glance, industry performance, industry outlook, pro products and markets, um, competitive landscape, any competitive companies. Um, and then a little bit about um, the operating conditions, and also you'll learn more about the customers this way. So this just gives you more of an in-depth about kind of the background of your project or industry and kind of what else is already out there. So um, that's the IBIS world. And then the other thing is too, if for some reason you can't find it, for one thing I can help you, so just email Difference Maker and I'll try to help you guys out if you're having any um, difficulties. And then also talk to customers. So if you know who your customers are, email them, call them, set up appoint appointments with them. I had to call hospitals. I talked to laboratory supervisors. I sent them surveys to get data on how much the product should be priced at. And, um, Is that easy to do, Molly? It's not easy. It's very time consuming. So start now, definitely. How many people do you think you talked to? How many did you try to talk to? I tried to talk to probably like 20 or 25, and maybe in the end about 10 actually responded to me after I kind of harassed them. <laughs> so you have to call them a lot, email them, and then they get to know you. you. You're doing it for like a good cause. You know, you're a student, and then they pay more attention to you. Um, so you can come off like that way too. Um, so definitely always talk to your customers. And then like I said, last thing, if you need any help or assistance, feel free to email Difference Maker, and I'll get back to you guys.